Hi guys and happy Easter. It's Easter week this week. Um, so, you know, what it means is all the good vibes. Four weeks, uh, four days of working this week, four days of working next week. Does it get any better? Oh my goodness. Um, I know for most people, it's, we don't even know what Easter is about. We don't even know um, what we're celebrating, but we're just like, you know, whatever happened that Easter weekend, I wasn't there, but I am here for the good vibes. I'm here for celebration. Thank you, God. And yes, God is a God for good vibes, but can I just encourage you and just ask you, you know, to indulge me for a little bit so we can talk about how um, God is more than a God of good vibes and Easter is more than just good vibes and holiday shareheads and, you know, oversleeping, indulgence, etc., etc. All those things, yes, but there is so much more, so much richer, so much better. My name is Angie Obwaka. And today I would like to talk about Easter and Easter weekend and why it's an incredible time, yes, to celebrate, but an incredible time to reflect and, you know, just take some retrospective um, sort of posture, even as we think about um, this, this, this significant weekend in the Christian calendar and now the world, the world calendar over. And so what is Easter about? So if you know anything about the Christian faith, then you know there was an Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve ate something they were not supposed to have eaten. They disobeyed God by choosing um, a different way than the, he had chosen for them. Through that, sin entered the world. Sin entered the world and it meant that four generations from the time Adam and Eve were created, there was a bend, there was a propensity, there was a inclination to do the wrong thing in human beings. Have, a, have, have you ever looked at, eh, have, a, have you ever looked at a child and without teaching them selfishness, that, that it's there, without teaching them um, naughtiness and sneakiness, human beings are just have just have an incline or inkling towards doing the wrong thing and that's what we're calling sin missing the mark missing the standard of God of what God you know has in store or what God has set as the bar for humanity and so this sin entered the world and you know God was just like okay so because God is holy God is love and God is merciful and just and all these things but he is a holy God and so sin cannot exist and so you know Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden. This is a very quick, you know, summary of, you know, the, the Bible story. Uh, but I encourage you and invite you to go and read it for yourself. Very interesting. But anyway, so sin enters the world and God and human beings are separated. And God is like, okay, so we need to figure out a way to be able to reconcile ourselves um, and humanity back to one another. Otherwise, they're going to be separated for us um, forever. And they're going to end up in this place called hell, um, which was not made for human beings. The Bible says it was made for the devil and his followers, his, his angels, his demons. Um, but anybody who rejects God now ends up there. And so God um, creates this beautiful plan. He says he's going to come and he's going to rescue and redeem us. But he's going to demonstrate first. He's going to have a case study. And the case study was a special group of people starting with Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. Yeah, that Abraham. Um, and him and his family and his people, which ended up being the children of Israel, are the ones who God uses as a case study to be able to demonstrate. This is what it looks like to have me as your God, to walk with me, to follow my ways. Um, this is how I give you direction and counsel and etc etc of course humanity being humanity we failed over and over again that's the story of the old testament the judges the kings um, until israel went into captivity in the new testament when we start in in matthew there's been a period of 400 years of silence from god and um to humanity but god eventually now sends jesus at the appointed time he had already prophesied and the you know isaiah and all those other prophets had already spoken about jesus coming and so he comes and he lives this sinless life. He doesn't sin against God. He doesn't sin against humanity um, or, or his, uh, you know, fellow humans. Um, and he dies a, a, a very gruesome death. He's executed by the Romans and he dies. And at the point when he dies, God puts the whole weight of the judgment and the wrath and the, um, ab and the rejection um, towards that was meant for humanity, a fallen humanity on Jesus. And Jesus dies. And that's the day we celebrate as Good Friday. It's not good for Jesus. It was horrible. It was trash. It was the worst day of his life um, because now he was separated from the father. But it's Good Friday for us because our sin that we rightly deserve judgment for was now put on this perfect sacrifice who was Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, he made him. God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin so that we can become the righteousness of God. And so it's Good Friday because all our sin was put on Jesus and Jesus now dies on the cross. And anybody, anybody of any tribe, any race, any gender, any sexuality, any whatever, whatever you look like, 
If you decide that you believe that Jesus died on the cross and took on your sin so that you may have reconciliation with God, then automatically you have that free gift of salvation. You have that reconnection with God right where you are. And so that happens on Friday. Jesus is dead for a couple of days. And then Monday, he resurrects. And that's why we have a holiday on Monday again. So he resurrected on Sunday. But now because it's Sunday, we celebrate on Monday. So four-day weekend, not just good vibes. It's good vibes. Yes, you get to celebrate now. But how awesome is it to be able to celebrate with understanding for you to be able to celebrate not just on earth but even forever that because of what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago on the cross we are able to have good vibes forever with God in heaven and so so much more so this Easter if you have never made the decision um, to follow Jesus to accept the sacrifice that he made on the worst Friday of his life but the best Friday for us who know him as our uh, personal Lord and Savior can I just encourage you and invite you to just open up your heart and just be like, you know, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for not just giving me a four day holiday, but for coming onto this earth and dying on the cross for me, that I might have life and life more abundantly, that I may have forgiveness of my sins. I may have reconciliation with um, the father and I can have life forever more and so that's what Easter is about so um, even as you plan to travel even as you plan to celebrate and to go away and do all these things I pray that you do not forget the reason for this incredible um, season it's that Jesus came and died just for you he lived the life you could not live so that you could experience a life you did not deserve in unity friendship and fellowship with the father God bless you. Happy Easter. Stay safe. Um, let us know where you're watching from. What are you going to be doing this Easter weekend? Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe. We will see you on Resurrection Monday next week. Bye-bye.